Ray Ann Schmitz is a retired attorney in Scottsbluff, Nebraska. She testified for the defense at the Rice Point Dexter trial when she was a first-year law student. Her life was irrevocably changed by the conviction of her friend, David Rice, who now goes by the name Mondo Wilanga. Rayanne worked in legal aid as a public defender and in mediation during her legal career. She has never wavered in her belief that Mondo Wilanga and Ed Poindexter are innocent. I was called as a defense witness at David Rice's trial because he had been at my house at a party the night the bomb went off. About 15 people saw him there and I had spent the day with him. We had been at a rally at Memorial Park and about four o'clock in the afternoon, I drove him to Kuntz Park at the same time that Dwayne Peake testified that David was with him. And this is just one more lie that Dwayne Peake told at that trial. I did not know that I was going to be an alibi witness. I hadn't been prepared by the defense for my testimony. Uh, I spoke with the defense attorneys for a few minutes outside the courtroom uh, before I took the stand. I thought that I was being called as a character witness for David because I knew him so well and because I wanted the jury to know who he really was. Um, David was a Creighton Prep graduate. I met him when he was reading his poetry at Creighton University at a free university class. I knew David as a community activist. I knew him as a social worker for Greater Omaha Community Action. I, I knew him as a guitar player at Holy Family Church, at, at, at Ecumenical Council, the first guitar masses. David was playing the guitar. I knew him as a, a, a delegate to the Douglas County Democratic Party. So this is the David Rice that I knew, and this is the David Rice that I want to, to introduce to the jury. David Rice was not a guerrilla warfare man. Um, David Rice was not a violent man. I was there to give some context to the writings that David wrote in the NCCF newsletters that the prosecution had introduced into evidence. And what you need to know about David is that he was a performance artist and a comedian and a little bit of a clown and a, and a, and a political theater activist. And he loved pointing the finger at authority figures. He, he loved poking fun at people. He would go to the city council meetings and call Mayor Leahy, Musa Leahy, right to his face. Uh, he, and he enjoyed that, trying to shake people up. He would, had a Super 8 camera that he would film the police uh, as his response to police brutality in his neighborhood. So he was verbally responding to the violence that he saw taking place in the community. And the David Rice I know could not have made a bomb and he could not have killed a police officer and he certainly could not have used a 15 year old boy in, in that kind of plot to cause that kind of violence. It, it just was not in his character. As exasperating as he was, as outrageous as the things were that he said. If we're talking about our competing and we're serious about this, then we're talking about urban guerrilla warfare and we're talking about people using their brains. And you don't use your brain by throwing some bottles and some bricks and some pigs and getting some cruises. You off the pig by the means that are available to you, which can be Nobody believed that. Nobody who knew David Rice believed those things. They knew that it came from that sense of political theater. Unfortunately, the police didn't know that. The authority figures, the Douglas County attorneys didn't know that. David Rice was uh, very free about what he thought the answer to these problems were, and they generally included killing police officers. They didn't know David, and I thought that was what I was at the trial for, to put all of this in some kind of context and let the, the, the public, let the jury know that David Rice was a peaceful man. The next time I was in the courtroom was the day the jury pronounced the verdict. I had gone with Katie, my roommate and David's girlfriend, and when they were found guilty and sentenced to life imprisonment, we were devastated. 
I remember walking out of the courtroom and, and Katie could barely stand up. Her legs had just collapsed under her and I was practically carrying her out of the courtroom. And she hated America for what they had done to David. And she saved her money and left the country. She moved to England and she's lived there for 40 years. She never came back. So the public doesn't know the truth of David Rice. They don't know the, the injustice that took place in this trial, and they have no idea of the devastation that this has caused to countless lives by the wrongful conviction and imprisonment of two innocent men.